And I'll, I'll tell you an interesting story about, about the greatness of Michael Jordan. When I was coaching in Washington, we played the Indiana Pacers, and we were down 25 at the end of the third quarter. And I took Michael out of the game, and I said, look, Michael, uh, I know you think we can still win this game, but we got to play, you know, in, 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 in two nights. And, and uh, if we make a little run, I'll put you back in the game. Well, we didn't. Well, well I found out that uh, after the game was over that uh, he had eight points in the game, and he broke a streak of like 860-something games in double figures. And so the media was, you know, how do you think Michael's going to be with this? You know, I said, you know, look, Michael's got championship rings. He's got gold medals. He's got NCAA championships. He's got MVPs. He's not going to care about the eight points. So he, he met with the media and, and, and agreed. You know, that bus is lonely as a coach when you're sitting there after you've got your head handed to you. So I was sitting on the bus, and actually Michael had hired me. He was the part owner and president GM, hired me to be the coach, and then he came back to play. I'll never forget this moment ever as a coach. That this, to me, was, was greatness. He got on the bus, and he said, scoot over. And uh, he looked at me. And he said, do you think I can still play? And I said, absolutely. That's why I'm here, to be here to help you. He said, he said, you know, to be my coach, you have to believe in me and believe I can still play. And I said, Michael, I believe in you. He said, you did the right thing tonight. You did the right thing tonight. I don't care about the points, but I needed to know that you believe in me. Fast forward, we get on the plane. He has a few cocktails, smokes a couple cigars, all the things you're not supposed to do. Yeah. We get back about 3.30 in the morning in Washington. At 7.30 that morning, he's down in the fitness room with Tim Grover working out like you can't believe. Now, he's 41 years old. We play the New Jersey Nets the next night. And Michael scores the first three times he has the ball. Byron Scott takes a timeout. And my, Michael comes over and he says, I want the ball right there the rest of the game. And don't take me out till I tell you. And so that's, that's fine by me. So with two minutes to go in the game, he gives me the sign, like, that's enough. I take him out of the game. He walks over to the bench. I said, like, Michael, like, what happened tonight? He said, well, the guy who was guarding me was telling me, told me his back was hurting. Don't ever tell me you got a problem. He said, I'll, I'll make you pay for that. 51 points later, 51 points at age 41. He came back the next game with 46. And he looked at me and he said, I told you I could still play. 97 points. I, I, I mean, Mike, I was absolutely blown away uh, at what this guy could do. His, his mind, how strong it was. I mean, he's playing on one leg. I mean, he had cut his finger, you know, with a, you know doing a cigar. He had a, his, his finger was bent. He had a bad knee. The competitive will, and great. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. Mm. But that moment when he looked at me and asked me if I still believed in him, I said, this is the greatest player to play the game, wanting to know if I still believed in him. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a moment I would never, ever forget. Hmm.